What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're back with Destiny 2, and we've got the weekly reset for July 20th. So in game this week, Solstice of Heroes continues, we've also got a refresh on the Vault of Glass, Master Difficulty, and a new weekly challenge for Time Lost Weapons. On top of this, we'll see if anything unexpected happens story or quest-wise this week, as there are a couple of seasonal things still to come. And then we have all of our vendors, activities, rewards, and stuff like that to break down in the video. But first guys, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is available to play right now for free on mobile and PC, with a ton of different champions to play, and lots of attributes and artifacts to unlock to mix up and customize gameplay across the PvE and PvP elements of the game, and there are literally thousands of ways to set up your player. Raid rewards time investment pretty well, allowing us to spend in-game shards in the portal to acquire new champions, and then take them over to the tavern to do various champion upgrades. And when you think you're ready for a challenge, we can dive into one of the dungeons, like the Magic Keep where we encounter Princess Avila, a boss who channeled her strength with dark magic, and this is where specking up your champion will be important, as Avila replies a lot of buffs which make her stronger, and so the fight is about using skills to steal buffs back, strip buffs, or reduce the buff duration to increase survivability as you take down her health. And one of the best things about Raid is how champions come equipped with different combat mechanics for a particular enemy type, and you really can spec into certain aspects both as a champion and as teams. So if you like the look of Raid Shadow Legends, you can get a huge head start today by following the link in the description, or scanning the QR code right here on screen to unlock an epic hero, Chanoro, who's a super Super strong champion, but you'll also get 200k silver, an XP boost, one energy refill, and an ancient shard, which allows us to immediately summon a new champion as soon as we sign in. On top of this, you'll find extra rewards in your inbox in game for the next 30 days if you use the code or link in the description. So maybe I'll see you in game. But now, getting into Destiny 2, we can see right here that we've got Infamy for the taking this week, so we're going to see bonuses to Infamy inside of the Gambit playlist throughout the course of the week. I believe it'll be double Infamy until the weekend, and then triple Infamy over the course of the weekend, so definitely a good time to jump in. Of course, also this week, the Solstice of Heroes event is still live in the game, and this is running up until August the 3rd, so we've got a little while left. So it gives us another week of doing upgrades, unlocking triumphs, rewards, and all of that kind of stuff. And let us know how you're getting on with Solstice down in the comment section. For the Eververse store this week, as always, we've got a bunch of stuff on the front page featured for silver, but for Bright Dust, we do have the Pomegranate Gloss Shader available for 300 Bright Dust. And then the Bivalve projection right there uh, for the event for 1500 Bright Dust. We can also get the Goyster shell right here, a very, very curious looking thing for Solstice of Heroes this year. You can grab that for 2850 Bright Dust, as well as the Moat Juggal Emote for 3250 Bright Dust. And then over on the main page, we do have the fishing emote for the event this year. One that you maybe want to grab for 3,250 Bright Dust. We've also got the Boy Trap for 2,850. I believe that's a new one this year. And then the Aurum Pace uh, Exotic Sparrow for 2,500 Bright Dust. As well as the Summertide Kite Exotic Ship that we can grab for 2,000. And then we've got the Future High Five Multiplayer emote, as well as the Sudden Squall ornament for the Sturm right there. And then we have the Sandcastle effects, as well as Nightmare Emergence, Shocking Entrance, and Beach Ball effects, Transmat effect. With the shaders finally being Golden Age Wine, as well as Welded Brass, the Bruised Blush, and the Vintage Timber available this week. Over here in the Legends tab, of course, we've got the Vault of Glass, and we do have that new Master Challenge mode available this week. So the challenge is going to be uh, Wait For It, which I believe is the Conflux Challenge, and it should be the opportunity to get the Time Lost Vision of Confluence if you can complete that challenge. So if you do dive into the Vault of Glass, all the best getting those awesome rewards. The Nightfall and Grandmaster variant this week is going to include the Warden of Nothing Strike. And the Nightfall weapon drop should be the Azumi RR4. That includes the Adept variant when completing it on Grandmaster. But also bear in mind, next week, we're going to get access to the three weapons from last season. So that'll be Palindrome, Swarm, and Shadow Price, all in the rotation at the same time. And so that could be a good week to jump in and grind. Another thing to point out, but Team Scorched is available in the Crucible this week, as well as that bonus to Infamy over in the Gambit playlist. But at Banshee, we do have the Toil and Trouble, and at least in terms of trait bonuses this week, it's got Threat Detector and Outlaw. We've also got the Lonesome Sidearm with Grave Robber and Kill Clip, and then the Last Perdition with Grave Robber and Rampage, as well as the Pladius Corrector with Genesis and Elemental Capacitor. Then we've got the Outrageous Fortune Grenade Launcher with Snapshot Sights and Genesis, and finally, Memory Interdict with Underdog and Unrelenting. I swear he featured a bunch of these weapons last week, I'm not certain. Let us know down below, but... He's also got the targeting adjuster and backup mag mods available for today. 
801 this week has the Mimic Savior uh, set available. Not seeing any absolutely crazy stat rolls right here for the Titan, but of course check in on your different characters if you are after specific stat rolls. For mods though, today she's got Auto Rifle Dexterity as well as Charge Harvester. And when you're charged with light, any kill or assist has a small cumulative chance to cause you to become charged with light. And so maybe that's a mod that you'll be after this week. Then for Legend and Master Lost Sectors today, they're going to be over on the Cosmodrome, and we've got Vel's Labyrinth at 1310, dropping exotic legs. That one shouldn't be too bad, but we've also got Exodus Garden 2A, dropping exotic helmets, and of course that will be the 1340 variant. Finally, on the Europa Director though, we've got Simulation Safeguard for the Exo Challenge this week. Cadmus Ridge, as we can see, is the Eclipse Zone, and then the Empire Hunt that's featured is the Technocrat, so additional chances at Pinnacle Gear. But if you are jumping into Deep Stone Crypt, the challenge mode this week is the Core 4. But finally, over in the Dreaming City, the Ascendant challenge this week is Ouroborea, found via Aphelion's Rest in the Strand. So if you want the location for that Ascendant challenge, if you're still completing them from year two, we'll run it at the end of the video. But otherwise, for today, guys, that is everything we have to round up inside of this reset. So as always, I hope the video has been useful. And if it has, a rating down below very much helps us out on the channel. But also, if you're new around here, feel free to get subscribed and I will keep you posted on the world of Destiny 2. You can also turn on notifications if you don't want to miss out on anything. But let us know in the comments section if you're going to be jumping into the game this week. And otherwise, thank you as always for tuning in. And I hope you guys have an awesome day.